So we're doing C3 and Excel 2017. The first question is an algebra question. Um, not really much to worry about here, although some people are not really taking care to look for common factors or factorising anything. And a number of students have gone straight into putting over a common denominator, which makes it at best long and at worst wrong. Um, anyway, we factorise this using a, it's a difference of two squares, factorise the bottom. And now we're looking for the lowest common denominator. So if we, de if we multiply this on top and bottom by x plus 3, x minus 3, so to say, then we've got over a common denominator. So let's do that. x plus 3 times x minus 3 take away 2 over x plus 3 but times them by x minus 3 to give that common denominator let's just write it in with the common denominator in there and then that gives me 4x take away 2 times x minus 3 now multiplying at the top, being careful with the double negative, 4x minus 2x is 2x. And take away 2 times negative 3 is plus 6. A little bit surprised to see the number of students write minus 6 there, not noticing the double negative. And so here we go. And also the other thing I was a little bit surprised by is the number who left it there. Edexcel will always try and make it so they're testing as much as possible. So can you see that certain things cancel? And yes, hopefully you could. Here we go. So that's that. And the extra bit cancels. So that equals 2 over x minus 3. Okay, so that's the first question done. Let's look at the second question. Here we have an exponential question for part A. If we undo it by learning both sides, um, we can see that 3x minus 9 is equal to the ln of 8. Now, number again a number of students have not recognized that we can write that as two cubed and using the rule of logs the three can come downwards as basically using log x to the n is equal to n log x so that equals three ln two Okay, so we've got, just writing that out, the first and last bit of that, we've got 3x minus 9 equals 3 ln 2. Obviously I can see there's a common factor of 3, dividing everything by 3 is that. So we have x is equal to 3 plus, ln 2 plus 3. Okay, so that's the first part done. Now part B is uh, things with LUNs in. Um, we really should be combining the LUNs. I saw some fairly disturbing answers to this. Uh, the most common of which was this, is that you could just eat individual terms like this. Plus 4 minus Y, I saw that a lot of times. You can't do that. You've got to combine the LUNs first. You can't say that basically if a equals b plus c, that e to the a is equal to e to the b plus e to the c, which is effectively what you're saying. You can't say that. So a lot of people um, doing that. Bit worrying. Anyway, let's just do this. So now we're going to use the rules of logs to combine these two together. 2y plus 5 over 4 minus y equals 2 and now I could undo that by e in it so it's 2y plus 5 over 4 minus y equals 2 that e to the 2 so to say but now a lot of people seem to be leave it there but it wanted it in terms uh, it wanted whatever y was um, so we can't just leave it like that 
multiplying out 2y plus 5 is equal to e squared 4 minus y. So 2y plus 5 is equal to 4e squared minus 4y e squared. So bring the not four, four right? so, now bring the y e squared over to the other side and the five over to that, collecting the y's together. I get two y my plus y e squared is equal to four e squared minus five. Factorize. I get this. And then finally I can just divide to get my answer for y y equals to 4 e squared minus 5 over 2 plus e squared. Okay, so that's question 2 done. Let's look at question 3. Okay, so we've got a functions question. First bit is to, is to find a function here. Important thing here is it's telling us that x is greater than minus 2. Because, of course, it would have to be in order for the square root to be valid. So we can see that from this graph here, it'd be at, at its least when x is, the function will be least when x is minus 2, and that will be 3, and the range is the y values. So the range is, for part a, is that gx, the function, must be greater than or equal to 3. Make sure you get the right type of inequality because equality with minus 2 is defined in the function. So that's part A. Find g minus 1 and state its domain. Well, this is, um, if I swap my x's and y's to around, the inverse function will be this, uh, will be x equals to 3 plus the square root of y plus 2 swapping x and y's around in this function. Okay, so then I just need to rearrange. I've got square root of y plus 2 is equal to 3 minus x and or x minus 3. And so I can square so that x plus 2 is equal to x minus 3 squared so y equals to x minus 3 squared take away 2. Save yourself the bobby, you don't need to multiply out. It's in completed square form, which is fine. You're wasting time to multiply out. Um, but you're not waiting, you don't, don't forget it wants a domain. Now, we've got the range of the original function, which will be the, the x values for the uh, inverse function. Let's write the thing out in the proper notation. So our inverse function is this, with our x being greater than or equal to 3. Okay, that's part B, which is fine. Okay, part C says find the exact value for where gx is equal to x. So in other words, this is equal to x. This wouldn't be too bad. Part C. We've got 3 plus the square root of x plus 2 equals x. So let's just uh, bring the x over and multiply. So we've got square root, I mean x minus 3. So now we have x plus 2 is equal to x minus 3 squared. Multiplying that out, you get x squared minus 6x plus 9, which gives us x squared minus 7x plus 7 equals to 0. Let's go up to here now. Uh, using the formula, we have x equals to 7 plus or minus, although we're going to reject one of those in a moment, but I'll think about that in a moment, is the square root of, times by square root of 7 squared take away 4 times 1 times 7. 
which is 28, all over 2. So that's so that equals to 7 plus or minus the square root of 21 over 2. Now, the thing is, if we look at the original function here, it's got to be greater than or equal to minus 2. But more importantly than that, the actual function here has got to actually have an answer greater than 3. So 3 plus the square root of x plus 2 has to be greater than or equal to 3. Because we find the range to be equal to 3. So we need to reject the negative answer because that's less than 3. So we must write, the we must ignore the negative 1 to get the full credit. Okay, you don't need to explain why, but you, you, you do need to make it clear that you're only taking one answer. Okay, now uh, one mark question, which um, some people confuse some people. It is a bit confusing, really. It says, find that state the value of a for which ga is equal to g minus 1a. Now, I'm going to go back to the graph gr briefly on this. What we've actually found in part a is the value where the function is equal to x. Okay, so question four is an R formula question, and we're going to be first bit standard. You can use the R formula. The next bit is um, a kind of bit of trig identity, trig kind of working with trig identity type thing. And part C, as is quite common with Excel, is kind of combining these two to solve an equation. Okay, so let's do part A first. Okay, so they've given formula to use here. We want to express these two as the same thing. So if we expand out using the compound angle formula or the addition formula for cos theta plus x, that's cos theta cos alpha minus sine theta sine alpha let's multiply out and just rearrange a bit okay so we're going to compare coefficients now If we look at the cos theta term, we can see that we have cos theta here and we have cos theta here. So our cos alpha must be equal to 5. Okay, and then comparing the things in sine theta, we can see that 2 must be equal to r sine alpha. Now, it's a little bit concerning. I had a number of students who wrote minus 2 here. Look, we've got two negatives here. Um, when LXL give you uh, our formula to use, just take it for take it as given that these, when you compare, they're always going to be positive. The only time when it wouldn't be is when you've chosen the R formula that you're going to use and perhaps not chosen the ideal one. But otherwise, it'll they will always be positive here if they've given you a formula to use. Okay, so um, well, I'm going to square and add. So if we're squaring and adding, I know some people draw a triangle here, and that's good, that's fine. I'm going to do it this way. So we have r squared cos squared alpha plus r squared sine squared alpha equals to 5 squared plus 2 squared, which is equal to 29. But here we've got cos squared plus sine squared, which is equal to 1. So we have r squared equals to 29. r equals to the square root of 29. 
Okay, notice it wants the exact value of r. So anyone who actually you did some other method, maybe worked out alpha first and then used an inexact value for alpha to work out r would have lost a mark. And again, that happened to quite a few students I marked, who I marked as mark for. Right, so now if we divide to find the other one, we can divide and we get r sine alpha over r cos alpha is equal to 2 over 5 so that gives me tan alpha equals 2 over 5 so if I work out the inverse tan of that okay, we, uh, we get that as being only one three decimal places so we better give three decimal places 0 0.381 Okay, that's part A. Okay, let's look at part B. In part B, a lot of people, students got mixed up and started using double angle formula and all kinds of things. Notice that both of them have got 2x in them. Neither of them have kind of got a mixture of 2x and x, like a multiple angle and the angle itself. So using double angles is not a sensible thing to do here because we're... we're, we're everything's got 2x in it anyway. So starting off with the... top one it would seem a good idea to write cot at 2x as sine uh, cos x over sine x cos 2x over sine x over sine 2x which it is cot is 1 over tan but it's also cos 2x over sine 2x so that's minus pre over sine 2x. Now we've got a common denominator, so it's going to come out quite easily. We've got a common denominator of sine 2x, so that comes out as 5 cos 2x take away 3 and times through by sine 2x. That's equal to 2 sine 2x. So then we have 5 cos, rearranging that, 5 cos 2x minus sine 2x, 2 sine 2x is equal to 3. So C equals to 3. Okay. Those who went the right way on that did it okay, but say, uh, you know, a lot of students made a bad start by starting to use double angles and things. It's never going to be a good plan. Anyway, it's part C. Um, now, as I said, we, we've done the, we've got an R formula for something here, and we've got this equation here, but notice that equation is exactly the same is if this were equal to 2. So I'm going to rewrite that equation. And those who saw this were normally OK, but a lot of students didn't. Equals to 2. It's exactly the same. Up, uh, not equal to 2, equals to 3. Because we've shown that this equation is the same as this equation with c equals to 3. So, if I've got the original equation, I can, and I, then I can use this one to solve it. And why would I want to do that? Because it's easier, because I can use my R formula in part A. Now, my R formula in part A said that this here was equal to the square root of 29 cosine... Now, it's 2x here, so be careful, because although the original thing had an x in it, just replace all theta in it we can just replace replace theta with 2x plus my value of alpha which i found which is to three decimal places equal to 0 0.381 which is equal to 3. okay so we have cos of 2x plus 0 0.381 equals to 3 over the square root of 29. Now, notice the range that we need our values, which is 0x to pi. So, I'm going to inverse cos that. The principal value, the value that my calculator gives me, is 0 0.381 
point nine seven nine nine. But that's the principal value. Notice, because it's the cos graph, um, there will be another one. Because if the principal value, if the, what, there's one value here, there'll be another value here, which will actually be 360 if we're a degree uh, working in degrees, but we're not, 2 pi. It'll be 2 pi take away that value. So we've got 2 pi take away 0.9799 a whole lot of other stuff. Now solving for that um, basically I'm going to be taking away 0 0.381 and then dividing by 2. Make sure we're getting the right things in the order. Basically, we're solving each of these equations. 2x plus 0 0.381 is equal to 0 0.799. And 2x plus 0 0.381 is equal to 2 pi minus 0 0.9799, which I think comes to 5.30 or something. Anyway, so this gives me the values of x is equal to this so uh, that's the 0.799 take away 3.81 which is 0.599 divide that by 2 and I get the answer 0 0.30 it wants two decimal places so to two decimal places 0 0.30 and then this one the 2 pi minus 0 0.799 which is 5.30 something take away 0 0.381 which is 4.922 and then divide that by 2 get 2.46 ok so that's the first four questions done relatively straightforward there's some trickier bits coming um, we'll do the next part in the next two parts we'll probably do three parts for this paper but that's the first part with questions one two three and four done hope you find it useful and of course part the next part will be coming soon